As you can plainly see, we have here five slices of watermelon. I will deliver them to the members of our panel. Ladies first. Best Myers and Best Gear, that's for you. Thank you. And for another lovely lady, we have here Miss Betsy Palmer. And magnificent gentleman, Mr. Henry Morgan. Henry, that's for you. And uh, Bill Cullen, this is for you. This, of course, is for moi. Excuse me. Now, they don't know it, but they got a secret. I've got a secret brought to you by Bristol Myers, makers of Bufflin, the modern pain remedy that gives you fast pain relief without upset stomach. Bristol Myers bring you America's number one panel show, I've Got a Secret, starring Gary Moore. Thank you. Welcome again and officially this time to I've Got a Secret. We also want to take a few seconds out to welcome some good friends of ours, the Bristol Myers people who tonight join Winston Cigarettes as a co-sponsor. Now, panel, I see that you have found the bibs that were placed in front of you and you have placed the bibs down your own front, so just tackle that watermelon to your heart's content. All right. Now, we all set to play the game then? Yep. Yeah, right. Boom. Yeah. Let's have our first contestant. Will you come in, please? Now, gentlemen, we will ask you, please, to divulge your names and your place of residence. Uh, will you first of all tell us your name and where you're from, sir? George Gardner from Vincennes, Indiana, Gary. George Gardner, and he is from Vincennes, Indiana. And the gentleman to my left? Robert Nash from Vincennes, Indiana. Bob Nash, and he is of Vincennes, Indiana. All right, gentlemen, if you will whisper your secret to me, we will show it at the same time to our audience at home. I understand the designation, but uh, can you explain how come there are two of you? You, you start first, George. <laughs> huh? no? Bob, explain yourself, old man. <laughs> now, I think we're all straight in our minds, so panel, Mr. Gardner and Mr. Nash's secret concerns something they are... And, Betsy, let's start with you. Well, you're what I am. We're Hoosiers. That much I do know from together. Uh, tell me, um, is this something that you are? Does it have to do with our watermelon? Yes. yes. Did you arrange it so all the seeds are kind of together here and not spread all over like they are in most watermelons? <laughs> no, there's been no tinkering with the watermelons. No? Uh, has it something to do with these particular watermelons that we're eating tonight, uh, Bob and George? <laughs> No, $20 down, 60 to go, and we go to Henry Morgan, please. Do you raise watermelons? No. No. Have you, do you market them? No. Do you have any interest in them at all? No. Oh, no. Well, uh, let's say yes. Yes, so they have, a, they have a, a lively interest in watermelons, wouldn't you say? Yes. Sure, all right. Just in watermelons in general. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> $40 down, $40 to go, and we go to Bess Meyerson, please. And why are we eating these watermelons? I don't know, but well, I... Presumably because you enjoy them, we would hope. Oh, yes, indeed we do, especially yeah. with this heat wave. Let me ask George something. Do you have anything to do with watermelon races? With watermelon races? 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 Yes, anything to do with watermelons in a carnival sense. You know, is it watermelon time in Indiana? Is it watermelon time? Yes, it is? Just finishing oh. the season. This is the season. Just finishing the season. I see. Is this... All right, $60 down, $20 to go. We go to Bill Cullen. <laughs> First of all, what's a watermelon race? You know, I, what, explain that to me, Bess. What is a watermelon race? Eating it, watermelons. You know, oh, oh, oh watermelon a... eating race. Yeah. Is this watermelon 300 years old? <laughs> <laughs> we had something like that once. You gave us something that was in a cast for... That's right. 100 years. No, these are, this is a fresh watermelon you're chawing on. Well, if your secret doesn't have anything to do with this watermelon, I'll ask you the same question before. Why are we eating this watermelon? On top of your mouth, <laughs> cannot be answered by yes or no, sir. <laughs> Panel, you'll never guess it anyhow. Mr. George Gardner and Mr. Robert Nash have the rare distinction of being the world's champion watermelon seed spitters. <laughs> now, Mr. 
Gardner here holds the title for distance. Uh, what did you have to do to win, George? I spit a seed 31 feet, Gary. 31 feet. Oh, is that carry and roll or? Yeah, carry and roll. Roll counts too. All right, now, Mr. Nash, you hold the title for marksmanship. Yes. What did you have to do? I spit uh, three minutes. I spit 13 <laughs> seeds in a can at five feet. <laughs> Now, although they won the title at a state uh, exhibition or competition, I refer to them as world champions simply because we've never heard of any other such competition of this sort anywhere before. So you can see they've never had to compete with any challenges from outside their own state. Until tonight. of you is most anxious to challenge these gentlemen oh, yeah. for the title, isn't that right? Sure. Yeah. Oh, sure it is. Yeah. Oh. Right, then, the panel, if you will drop your forks and join me upstage, keep your bids on. Your bids on. And we will take the panel in order of their usual appearance. Bill Cullen first. Bill, here's a piece of, uh, oh. here's a piece of watermelon. I uh, like two seeds with you. Well, get one seed out of the watermelon. Keep the watermelon in your hand, proper tournament style. Stand on this line. Hold this mark. <laughs> No, no, the other way. I'll talk to you. One seed, one try is all you get. We've got the, uh, we got the floor marked off for distance, so let's see how far you get on the first carry. <laughs> he, went, he went the whole distance. He went 17 feet. Seventeen feet. All right. Now, Betsy, let's get you up there. No, you got a place to be. Right? You're such a friendly type. I see. I just take one seat. Just one seat. All, All right. right. See if you can beat Bill Cullen. Toe the line. Mm -hmm. I'm from Indiana, so we got to try here now. Here's some apple. Mm, I know he swallowed it. <laughs> um. It went over. Where did it go? Anybody catch Betsy's? <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, it's Bob. We'll mark it out. We'll mark it out here. All right. Now, next up is Henry Morgan. Henry Hot Lips Morgan. <laughs> I think I should tell you that I actually I'm an accuracy man, not a distance man. <laughs> You'll get a chance at that. Go on, Henry. Don't laugh. Don't laugh, Henry. Oh, you brought your own seed. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm using the champ seed you use. So get it back. <laughs> I always said I wouldn't do this for a living. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that. I'm not doing anything. Come on, Henry. Spit. <laughs> Henry, we're going to have no. the marksmanship test. Oh, oh. Marksmanship. oh. Freddy? Yep. May I? Yep. I have to say, may I? Yes, please. <laughs> Go ahead, spit. Your foot's <laughs> over. No. Just a minute now. No, your foot was over. <laughs> All right. Very good. Oh, that was awesome. Very good. All it's right. Pretty pretty well, they went right up to a try. I actually beat Bill Cullen, but the champion, no doubt, is Betsy, Betsy Palmer. I got it. <laughs> Well, we'll go right from him to him. We won't have marksmanship for everybody. First five rolls back up. <laughs> it made it all the way out in the audience, didn't it? <laughs> we, are not, we have not time for the marksmanship contest, so oh, take your seat and watch the champ here. Now, how many did you do? 13 in, in three minutes? 13 in three minutes. We'll, we'll give you one mouthful, as many as you can get in one mouthful. He's already one mouthful ahead. Okay, ready? Five feet. Uh, one. That one hit it. Almost. Two in the can. <laughs> three in the can. Three, three, one more. 
Born here. Well, aside from that, tonight is also a very special night on I've Got a Secret, because we are welcoming... <laughs> Bill, don't get in the new client's way. Now, let's, without further ado, welcome our next contestant. Will you come in, please, sir? Would you tell our panel, please, what your name is and where you're from? Uh, Jack Christensen from Mason City, Iowa. Jack Christensen, and he is from Meredith Wilson's hometown, Mason City, Iowa. Now, Jack, if you'll whisper your... No, first of all, let me say that he has one of the most incredible secrets or stories that I have ever heard. I have a feeling that newspaper feature writers are going to be writing about this young man for a long time to come. Now, the story begins, innocently enough, with his secret. So let's show his secret to the audience. Mr. Christensen, would you whisper it to me, please? Oh. All right, now let's show the picture to the audience. Here's the picture. Thank you. All right. That's where the story starts. Panel, the clue concerns something someone did to him. And we'll start with, uh, let's start with Bess, please. Something someone did to you, Jack. Um, this picture, does it, um, the picture that the audience uh, saw, does it show your secret? In other words, something being yes. done to yes, you. It was does. it a physical thing that was done to you? Yes. Physical thing, yes. yes. Was it done recently? Yes. Within the last, Within the last what? week? Within the last week? Yes. Mm -hmm. Just barely. All right, $20 down, $60 to go. We go to Bill Cullen, please. Jack, you look like an athlete. Are you? Yes. But it's immaterial. Oh, it didn't happen in a contest or anything like that? No. Uh, was this thing done to you by one other person? Yes, it was. Of the same uh, gender? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, believe me. Say yes. Yes. $20 down, $40 to go, and we go to uh, Betsy Palmer, please. Was this done to you by uh, someone that was uh, not an American? Yes. Could have been Mr. Khrushchev. Yes. Oh, what did he do to him? I don't know. <laughs> well, we'll see if Henry knows or not. $60 are gone, $20 remain. Henry Morgan. Did he pat your stomach? Yes, he did. obviously saw the same picture that was in thousands upon thousands of newspapers all over the country. This is a picture right up. Old crap. Now I've got them all out of order. Oh, don't go away. All right, here's the, with a little luck, this is the picture, yes. That was oh, syndicated and sent all over the country. Remember that one? Uh -huh. yeah. Now, as I said, that's only the beginning of Mr. Christensen's story. Uh, so this is only one of several hundred pictures taken uh, uh, of Khrushchev and Mr. Christensen together. Now, here's another showing them side by side as they inspect uh, several Iowa farms. See? Side you know by side. father and son almost. Do you know it in the pictures? Same general bill. <laughs> now, they also had lunch together. Jack showed Mr. Khrushchev how to pose for an interesting picture. He held up a little girl for Khrushchev to kiss. And here on the cover of Life magazine, Jack had just handed Mr. Khrushchev the ear of corn, which he so beamingly oh. displays here. Now, Jack, you were not Mr. Khrushchev's host, were you? No, I wasn't. Mr. Roy Garst was his official host. Uh, did you know him? No, I didn't. Well, were you one of the 1,000 security police surrounding Mr. Khrushchev that day? No, I wasn't. Well, the only people there were some 350 reporters and some farm hands. Were you one of these? No, I wasn't. Well, Jack, you were with Mr. Khrushchev about seven hours, right? Yes. How did you happen to get there? Well, I just wanted to see uh, what he looked like. <laughs> and he just walked in. That's right. He just walked in. Yeah, right. Well, up until now, I had thought that One-Eyed Connolly was the greatest gate crasher of all time, but I think we've got the new champ here. Did you plan to spend this time with Mr. Cruz, John? No, I didn't. Well, you had driven out to the farm hoping just to get a look at him. Is that right? Yeah. So what happened? Well, I got there, and uh, I hated to leave after I got there, and they were talking about having dinner, so I thought I'd just well stay. <laughs> This is a scoop we have tonight. What 
what amazes me is that newspapers have been printing pictures like this one here and like one where he had picked up the little girl. Here he is, he picked up a little girl. See, see Jack standing right behind Mr. Khrushchev there. He picked up the little girl and giving it to Khrushchev, see? And many others, newspapers have been printing them, and nobody has ever questioned to say, who is the fellow in the white T-shirt? <laughs> They're finding it out right now, tonight, for the first time on this show. <laughs> <laughs> and you'll be able to read about it for the first time in this issue of Life magazine, which is this week's issue. Uh, now, it's a funny story. Incidentally, the funniest part of the story to me is that with close to 1,500 security people and reporters there, they only allowed seven people to accompany Khrushchev into the cattle pen. Who do you think one of seven was? <laughs> was our boy. Oh, yes, yes, Gary, uh, uh, how did our producers find him? Through Life magazine. Um, Life put us onto the story. Exactly. And he put life onto the story. He called life up, and they looked back in all the files, and sure enough, every place, every picture they looked at, there's Bruce Chop's old buddy Jack. <laughs> so, Jack, it's been a joy having you with us. Here is your box of Bristol Myers products. Here is the $80 you have won, and I do hope that you will leave us the address of your penitentiary, because we would like to... Um, it's all there. <laughs> Heads are rolling in Washington tonight. <laughs> Panel, we're going to have to ask you to leave the premises, if you will. We will call you back as briefly as possible. How Hi, and welcome back. <laughs> now it's time for us to meet our special guest for tonight, the bearded genius of Columbia Records, a man who has millions of people singing along with him. Here is Mitch Miller. Oh, thanks. So the reviews were very nice this morning. <laughs> Can you tell us about your secret, Mitch? Uh, yes, Gary. I'm here to correct uh, uh, an injustice that has been perpetrated by the entire recording industry. Gracious. Tell me about it. Well, uh, you know, practically everybody in this business is making records, especially in show business. You have made one. Bill has made one. Best has made one. Henry. Henry has made one. All have made rec records except Betsy Palmer. Hey, that's right. That's a tremendous oversight, Mitch. Exactly, and I think that Betsy Palmer should make a recording, say, of a, of a dramatic reading. And I'm sure it would be a bestseller, and I promise to do something about it. In fact, I'm going to give her an opportunity to make a record right here on the stage at my own expense. Well, that's very nice of you, Mitch. Is that your secret? Well, partly, Gary. Uh, unfortunately, the recording equipment I, I needed is tied up uh, elsewhere, see? Mm -hmm. So Betsy will have to make a record on this. Matt? Looks like just a piece of tinfoil. Exactly. I realize it isn't exactly hi-fi, but it's, uh, it'll do, you know. It's the same sort of uh, tinfoil that Thomas Edison used on his first phonograph that he invented. Oh, very great. So, your secret is that you're going to make a recording of Betsy Palmer, and uh, you're going to use Thomas Edison's own first phonograph? Exactly. Well, all right, it'll be interesting to see that, too. Let's uh, get the panel back in, please, as quickly as possible, because history is to be made upon this evening. All righty. Now, panel. You know Mitch Miller? Well, no. Pass no, no, and Betsy. You know, she's a flute player. I know. She's a flautist. <laughs> now, panel, Mitch uh, Miller has a secret. It concerns something he's going to do. And we'll start there. Well, let's start with Bill Cullen. Well, I've known Mitch for a long time. And it could be anything. Does it have anything to do with music, Mitch? Partly, partly, Bill. You're not going to have us make an album like your sing-along. I mean, you don't want us to sing along with you, do you? It'd be great, but this isn't the occasion, no. It's a nice plug for the album, though. You got it. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> Twenty dollars down, sixty to go, and we go to Betsy Palmer. Uh, Mr. Miller, is there something you're going to do? You're going to do it to us this evening? Yes, Miss Palmer. Uh, uh, us, <laughs> us is perhaps the wrong pronoun. Fish around for one more intimate. Are you going to do it to um? We to we. To we? <laughs> no. To are you going to do it to the fellows on the panel? No, no. You're going to do it to the girls on the panel. Yes. Ah. Uh, not, uh, mm, you. Get a little closer. You, you, you. Me? You. Me? You. I. I. You're going to do it to I. No, you're going to do it to Bill. No, I. You. I. Yeah. Uh, are you going to do it to me? I. Yes. <laughs> but I don't know you. I don't know you. <laughs> <laughs> we will before it's over. All right, there's $40 down and 40 to go, and we go to Henry Morgan, please. 
Tell you the truth, I know both of them, and uh, you're right. <laughs> Mitch, I, I, when I found that it's Betsy, I guess we're all interested in seeing it happen. Why waste time? <laughs> $60 down, 20 to go. Bess, have you got any ideas as to what Mitch is going to do? Well, uh, Betsy sang so beautifully on the show one week. Maybe you're going to have her sing. No. And you, no? No. Is, it, is she going to perform on an instrument, perhaps? No. And, and is she going to do anything musical? No. No. Ah, uh, panel, you were getting close. Mitch Miller discovered that everyone on our show has an album on the market. All, all of us except for Betsy. Yes. So, Betsy, tonight, Mitch is going to give you your big chance. He's offered to personally produce a record here and now of you doing a dramatic reading. Now, originally, oh. now, originally Mitch intended to do this on hi-fi, but he ran into a snag in getting the proper equipment that he wanted, but we didn't let that stop us. Uh, you're going to make your very first record on... Well, open the curtains, please. <coughs> Thomas Edison's very first phone. <laughs> <call. laughs> Nice to see you, sir. Uh, this is Mr. Natesel of the Henry Ford Museum in Greenfield Village at Dearborn, Michigan, and, and they were kind enough to lend us this original model of Edison's first phonograph. Now, Mr. Natesel has already wrapped the tin foil around the cylinder, and all he has to do is to crank it by hand, and then he can play it back for us. Now, one, of the one of the problems in recording on this machine is that you have to shout into this horn. Now, Betsy, would you come up here, please, dear girl? Oh, my. <laughs> Now, to make sure we get everything right, we have chosen... You don't a... look like that dog, do I? <laughs> nowhere near. Here is a copy of Elizabeth oh. Barrett Browning's, one of her po uh, sonnets from the Portuguese, the familiar How Do I Love Thee. Now, will you give us a voice test, please, right. into the horn, nice and loud. You've got to get right close, close, right close right. in there, right close, just close. How do I love thee? No, no, it's got to be about oh. twice that loud, and your face has got to be closer yeah, in here. Yeah, right in, right now. close in. How do I love thee? That's good, but it's got to be about twice that loud. You're kidding. No, no I'm sorry. <laughs> How do I love there. thee? Now, <laughs> now get, get in closer. Right. That's it. <laughs> get it, keep it as close in as you can to I'm me. I'm going to look like that dog. <laughs> Well, now, we want, to, we want to do this right for you. We're going to give you a good background. Mitch Miller and his magic oboe. It's Norman. Yes, and here's Norman Paris on, on piano. Norman. Oh. Now, gentlemen, you start the accompaniment. Betsy, remember, face as close as you can get it and as loud as you can go. I'm sorry. I didn't make a record now. Okay. <laughs> start, gentlemen. How do I love thee? Well, let me count the way. I love thee to the depths and the breadth and the height my soul can reach. When feeling out of sight for the end of being an ideal great. I love thee to the level of every day's most quiet need by sun and candlelight light. I love thee freely as men strive for right. I love thee purely as they turn from faith. You know I'll never work again. I never Now we have, we've gotten started on our first album. We have a small, dis is this going to be offered to the public? Yes, uh, no. it'll, be, it'll be ready for distribution <laughs> to anyone who owns a machine that can play it. Uh. So friends, be the first in your neighborhood to have low fi <laughs> Now we're played back, and I know it's not proper on television. Stay where you are, Betty. It's not proper on television to show microphones. I don't know why not, but, but tonight we're going to ask you gentlemen to put the microphone right down into the horn if you can. All right, gentlemen, go. Thanks so much. Norm Park. Now, off. Bye. Bye. See you next time. 
next week. This has been a Mark Goodson, Bill Cotman production. Betsy Farmer's gown by Doreen Fancher. Be sure to watch The Cotto on another network. See your local listings for time and station. This is John Cannon speaking. Stay tuned now for another Circle Theater drama based on an actual event. Next on most of these stations.